Welcome to the IT Shed. In this video we're going to look at CS50's introduction to program of Python, problem set 3, fuel gauge. Fuel gauge. Fuel gauges indicate often with fractions just how much fuel is left in a tank. So for instance a quarter indicates the tank is 25% full, a half indicates that it's 50% full etc. So in a file called fuel.py we'll implement a program that prompts the user for a fraction x and y which is like 1 slash 4 or 1 slash 2 here, indicate a quarter and a half respectively, where each of the x and y are integers. And then the program is to output a percentage round as the nearest integer of how much fuel is left in the tank. So for instance, if the user inputs 1 slash 4, the output should be 25%. 1 slash 2, the output should be 50%, etc. If though there is 1% or less fuel remaining in the tank, E is be outputted. And if there's 99% or more remaining in the tank, F is be outputted. Now if X or Y is not an integer, or X is greater than Y, or Y is a zero, we to instead prompt the user to enter it again. Let's look at an example. So when something other than integer is entered, it just reprompts the user. When quarters enter, 25% is outputted, half, 50% is outputted, three quarters, 75, and when it's full, then F is outputted. So as usual, we're going to make our directory fuel, cd into it, code fuel.py, and then we're going to submit it to CS50 for testing. Let's do this. Up until now, I've been using CS50's online compiler, but today I'm going to try something different. I'm going to use problemis.com. I think it's just a bit cleaner and easier for me to demonstrate stuff here. So as usual, we're going to break things down. I'm going to break this into two halves. That is to prompt the user for a fraction, x slash y. And then we're going to output it as a percentage of how much fuel is left in the tank. So if the user inputs 1 slash 2 or 1 slash 5, Four slash four, etc. We're going to parse that information here. We're going to take the numbers either side of it. We're going to get rid of the forward slash, and then we're going to convert that into a percentage of what's left in the tank. Now we're going to reprompt if either of these conditions are true: x or y is not an integer, x is greater than y, or y is a zero. So we're going to keep reprompting if any of these conditions are met. And once that has been satisfied, we move on to part two which is to get information we've we've taken from up here and we've calculated up here and to return the different outputs. So we calculate uh, whether it's 1% and if it is we'll output E, 99%, we'll output F. And then, then we're going to catch any exceptions like a value error or a zero divisional error. Okay, let's start by getting input from the user. So I'm going to create a variable called fraction. I'm going to assign that to input. Fraction. So remember that the input the user will see is fraction here, and he's going to input an integer with forward slash in the middle, and then we're going to convert that to percentage. So when the user inputs something like 1 slash 8, we need to be able to parse that. So take these two numbers, discard the forward slash, and use the numbers to do our calculations with. So for that we're going to use split. Split is an inbuilt Python function that splits a string into a list. Uh, the default separator is a white space, but you can you can specify any separator. So for instance here, I'm going to do fraction. That's split. And we're going to specify our separator in inverted commas as a forward slash. So that will take, for instance, if I was to do test here. Sign that. I'm going to print the test just to show you what happens. I'm going to run the program. You see fraction is displayed here to the user. So I'm going to input 1 slash 2. And we get a list with 1 and 2. So for our purposes, we're going to use x and y. So I'm going to change this here to x and y. We do two of them together. So x and y. So that will take the first number into x and the second number into y. 
Now, the program will input them as strings, so that would be x as a string and y as a string, but that won't work for our calculations, so we're going to have to change them. So you can do it individually, so x assigned to int, int x, and y is assigned to int y. So an integer here is just changing our string to an integer. So x is a string. So if it was containing the number 3, for instance, that would be a string. But by changing it to an int, we're actually just changing it to a number and not a string anymore. So we can do calculations with it. That's what that does. Now you can do this all in one line. So what you can do here x, comma y, sign to And we print x, print y. We run our program again, we have fraction, so 1 slash 8. Now we have 1 and we have 8 and we've got rid of the forward slash. So now we need to get percent, so we get rid of this. And we're going to use the information we have to get the percentage. So percent, just a variable called percent I'm creating. And I'm going to use x forward slash y. So if I was to print percent on the program, so 1 slash 2, and we get 0 0.5. So our percentage is working. I wish to clarify that the forward slash here is actually a division. So in Python, we got plus, minus, we got multiply, and we got division. Okay, now that we have that done, we're going to try in a while loop to keep looping. Because remember in CS50, it will keep prompting the whole time. So we'll use that a while loop to achieve that. While true. And I'm going to indent. So let's look at some of our errors. So we're to reprompt, that means the while loop is to keep looping and we're to keep prompting the user if x or y is not an integer, y is a zero, or x is greater than y. So let's have a look at our CS50 assignment again. So here we have a value error and a zero division error. So a value error is raised when an operation or function receives an argument that is the right type but not appropriate. So in our sense here, if x was a string, or y was a string, then it's not an integer and it raise a value error. And y is zero, so zero division error when the second argument, which in our case is y, is a zero. So here, for instance, if x was one and y was zero, that would raise a zero division error. So what we need to do is a try and accept statement. Now we'll have a look at x is greater than y now in a few moments. Let's type try. And we're going to have to indent again. For accept, I'm just going to paste in the value error and zero division error. Finish up with a colon. So what have we got here so far? So we have a while loop, we have a try and accept statement. Now, for as long as the while loop is running, the user is going to be prompted to enter a fraction. Now, that's going to be stored in the variable fraction that we created. So, if the value is a string and that line wasn't there, then this would kick in. And zero division error if y was a zero, then this would kick in. So, if we get an error, we're just going to pass. So, the last thing we need to check is that x is smaller than y. So, if x is smaller than y, so x is 1 and y is 2, then we'll get a number that's under 1. If it's the other way around and say x is bigger than y, so x is 8 and y is 6, then we'll get a number that's bigger than 1. So we need to make sure that x is either smaller or equal to 1 at all times. So for that we use an if statement. So if, if x is smaller or equal to 1, 
then we break. So if x is smaller or equal to 1, then the code is correct and the user inputted the correct fraction. So we'll break out of our loop and we'll go down to the rest of the code we haven't written yet, which will do the calculations and give the users feedback. If x is bigger than 1, then we'll keep looping because it means the x is bigger than y and obviously the user inputted the wrong fractions. So he'll be reprompted to enter the correct fraction. And that'll keep happening until he does. So let's try it here. Let's run the program. So fractions is uh, displayed. So we'll enter 8 for x and 2 for for y, which means that x is bigger than y. So we're reprompted again. So 6 and 3. Reprompted again. So if we do it right, 1 slash 2. So this will break into where our code will be in the next part here. Okay, that's our first part of the program done. This while loop mechanism will just keep looping. It's going to take the input from the user, pass the information, and then keep looping until it's correct. It's going to look out for the errors, and as I said, it'll stay in the loop until everything is correct, then it'll break out of the loop, which is the second part of our code. So the second part of our code, after it breaks out of the loop, is doing the calculations and giving users feedback. So first off, we're going to do a percent. Percent. by 100. So what's happening here is to do percentage properly you divide uh, y by x, y into x and then you multiply by 100. So we've the first part done here, divided y into x. So we're getting here for instance 0.25 and 0.5 etc. So to get 25% and get 50% we're going to have to multiply by 100 which we're doing down here. We also have to round it up to the nearest integer as specified <coughs> in the assignment. So for that we're going to use the round function, which is a Python function. So it's round and then we put our argument, which is percent in here. So this is going to take percent and it's going to round it up to the nearest integer. And we're going to save that back to itself. So it's rounding percent and saving back to percent. So the final piece is we have to give the user its feedback. So if it is empty, if it's full, if not, what percentage fuel is left in the tank? So for that, we're going to use an if statement. So if percent is smaller or equal to one, then print E. So it specifies print E if it's smaller or equal to one. Now I know that's done up here as well, that's just to get out of the loop. So once out of the loop, it's going to do the calculations. So next, let's check as a full. So elif percent is bigger or equal to 99, then print f for full. <clears throat> now the remaining part left is just what's in between, empty and full. So if it's not empty, it's not full, we have to give the percentage. So we're going to use the else statement. So else, we're going to print percent. Now the this will just print the percentage, like twenty or fifty, etc., to the screen. But the assignment specifies we must put in the percent operator, percentage operator, which is here. So that's going to throw an error. So in order to do that, we're going to use an F string. So an F string, which is a format string. So I put it, so F and then do inverted commas. And then we're putting our variable into curly brackets. And then we're closing off our inverted commas. So here we have the F to make it an F string. Then we have our, everything else is wrapped in inverted commas. Our variable itself, which is taking the the variable here, pasting it in here, is contained within curly brackets. Now this percent sign is going to be printed to the screen, and it's all contained within this print statement. So that is, in effect, our program done. Let's test it. So fraction. So we're going to say four divided by four. It's full. Perfect. Now what about 
5 divided by 4, which is an error. So it'll reprompt. And we're going to do 1 slash 2 and 50%. So that looks like it is working. OK, I have pasted it in here and I'm going to submit it to CS50 for testing. Before I do, I just want to run over it one more time. So we've got two halves of the program. This half here, which just takes information, passes information, and checks there's no errors. Once that's everything's OK there, it breaks out of the loop. We uh, multiply our percent by 100 to get a proper percentage. We round it, and then we use if statements, if, elif, and else, to give the user its feedback, their feedback. So. Let's see if it works or not. So, all greens. So another one done. So thank you for joining me and I hope I'll see you in the next video.